Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI again, and I'm doing another unscripted edit. And it's kind of fun for me to do these. It's um, it's kind of like a behind the scenes, right? Because I, I make all these videos where I do these things, and I t go from point A to point B, and it looks like I just kind of knew what to do, and I went straight to it. And the truth is, it's not like that at all. My editing is a bit of a winding path, and um, it's never really a straight line unless it's an incredibly simple image. But um, so I kind of like doing the, uh, these kind of behind the scenes or unscripted edits because it shows you what it's really like. You know, I'll often look at a photo and think, okay, I kind of know what I want to do to that, but not always. Um, and in Luminar, because I'm, you know, I'm arguably really familiar with it, um, I can look at a photo and say, I kind of want to do this and I think this is how I'm going to get there. So I'm going to walk through an edit. Here's the photo I took in Iceland on the Luminar photo camp back at the beginning of uh, 2020 in February, uh, and then the world promptly went on lockdown. Um, so um, I have not edited this photo, and it's just uh, it's just something that was kind of cool. We were at, you know, we'd shot a, uh, like an ice cave in the morning. Anyway, um, it was cool stuff. So the first thing I want to do is, I, I think I do want to crop it 16 by 9, and I think I'm going to pull it in a little bit from that side, and um, maybe a little bit like that, just kind of framing him in the center, which... You know, people might tell you composition-wise, that's not a wise thing, but I kind of like it. So um, now that I've got that done, you know, I want to jump into the editing and try to figure out how I want to get from here to my final step. So I think I'm going to try Accent AI just to kind of see what it does to the photo. And, you know, obviously it does quite a bit, um, and, and I kind of like that, to be honest. And that's a thing I will often do is because Accent AI does more than just brighten a photo, this one was a little bit dark, as you can see, right? Um, and I want to get more visibility into the ice because there's a lot of detail and a lot of kind of cool stuff there. Um, so sometimes when I have a photo like this, I'll just take Accent AI, even if I don't use it in the edit, and just kind of drag it and go pretty far and just try to figure out, all right, what's it doing to the photo, number one, and number two, do I like it? Um, and so, you know, I might like uh, what it does to the photo, but maybe I don't want to use Accent AI because, you know, maybe it does a little too much of something. So anyway, that's a long way of saying it's a good experiment to just kind of come in and do a little bit of that um, and then, um, you know, get per perhaps an idea of what direction you want to go in your edit. Uh, I think I'm going to go to the uh, the light tool next, and I'm going to experiment with warmth. And you know what? I, I don't want to go warmer. Um, it is really blue, that ice. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I do want to pull highlights down. They're a little bit high for me, and I want to lift shadows a little bit. Whoa, maybe not that much, but something like that because, again, great detail in that eye. So it's just I'm, I'm a little biased because I took it, but it's a it's a really cool shot. Uh, we were part of the photo tour. We were shooting here, and he climbed up there and was posing. And I, I said, like, do it. You know, like I'm a champion kind of thing. So he did that. Which is, uh, which is kind of fun. So maybe a little experiment with whites. Yeah, see, see how the whites, that'll really brighten that, uh, that sky, which I kind of like. And then the blacks, of course, I don't know if I want to do much there. I don't think I do. I'm going to leave that alone. Reset that to zero. Okay, Structure AI. I use this one a lot, both to uh, enhance detail as well as soften things up. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do a tiny bit of softening for the sky. And then I'm going to have to come in and paint that in. So I've got my masking brush, and I'm going to come in here and just kind of paint along. And, um, you know, essentially, I just want to isolate that section a little bit, soften it up, simply because I just like that look. Um, it's certainly not required. And I'm going to go ahead and just fast forward the video. Okay, so there you go. I got a little bit of that in there, and I'm going to copy that mask because I might use it again. I'm looking at that. Uh, it's basically sunrise, okay? So what I want to do is bring up some of that color. And I'm going to start with Golden Hour and just kind of see what it does to the photo overall. I kind of like that. Um, see how it's creating that warmth that's kind of coming through and then the, the, uh, the cooler uh, surrounding frame, if you will. So I kind of like that. I think I'll do that. I don't know if dehaze is... Ooh, that's interesting. I don't use dehaze a lot, but look at how it cuts through and really adds to that sunrise light. I do like that. That's kind of interesting. So um, dehaze is not something I use a lot of. But now that I've done that, I feel like the photo is a little bit darker. I'm going to go back to Accent AI and give it a little bit more of that. Yeah, something about like that. So that looks pretty cool. Whoa, that's too much. Uh, I'm getting ahead of Luminar here. Okay, I settled on about 50. I'm going to go back to the highlights and take a look at those again. 
they were at negative 53, and I just want to be careful. I want them uh, not to blow out, um, and they weren't really close to blowing out, but they were a little bit brighter. So um, just kind of experimenting here. Actually, you know what? I actually think um, I've actually raised them a little bit. So again, I'm bouncing around. Next thing I want to do is go over to toning because uh, the highlights, uh, which is basically the sky, is where all that warmth is. And I'm really trying to play off the warm and cool here. So I'm going to go into highlights and just drag the saturation a little bit. I'm leaving it in that hue of red, and that's really bringing up that sunrise, as you can tell. So I think that looks pretty nice. And uh, yeah, I like that. I think that looks pretty, pretty sweet. So now that I've done that, I think what I'm going to do is go get a local adjustment. And I'm going to click uh, Add and get a basic local adjustment. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to paste that mask. And that was the mask I did earlier for the negative structure. But I'm going to invert it. So now if I hit the forward slash key, you can see my mask looks something like that. So basically, whatever I do here is going to apply to the kind of the frame and the person, if you will. And I think what I'm going to do is maybe lift the exposure just a tiny bit uh, because, you know, I want to maintain the, uh, the, the brightness level that I have in the sky. But I want to lift that a little bit for the uh, uh, kind of the frame. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, see what that does. It's making it a little bit darker, of course, but uh, that's okay. And I'm going to add some structure AI. I want to bring up some of that crunchiness in the ice. That really brings it to life. So let me show you what this basic local mask has done. Again, it's isolated there around the frame, if you will, primarily. So there it is before I uh, added this, and there it is after. I think that looks pretty cool. That uh, that ice was just uh, just unreal. And of course, that sunrise was beautiful. So I'm going to check on the vibrance while I'm at it to see what it looks like. If I add a little bit of vibrance to that um, that frame, if you will. Let's see, it's bringing up the blue a little bit. I don't want to go too much, but I really like that. Um, I mean, it, it, that's, again, that's what it looked like, you know? So that's pretty cool. I think I'm going to leave it like that, and I'm going to check on the cool, and the, or the, the temperature, I should say. It's a better way to say it. I'm going to go a tiny bit left, just get a little bit more blue in that and um, I think that looks pretty good. So let's go back to the, the main editing tab, and let's do a comparison here of our before and after. You can see I really pulled up the, the light in the sky, and the sunrise was pretty beautiful. Um, I've got some just killer shots from inside the ice cave where we were, uh, which is, you know, it's about a five or 10 minute walk from where this spot is, but anyway, if you ever get a chance to go to Iceland, go, uh, and in the winter, it was fantastic. It was cold as hell but it was fantastic. But if you look at my before and after, I really like what we've got here. And if I do an overall before and after, there it is, you know, a little bit darker, a little bit less vibrant and that sort of thing. And now I feel like the ice has really come to life. It feels like it's just got a whole lot going on, but I like that. I don't always necessarily like a busy frame, but this frame is so interesting that I feel like crunching it up, adding a pop of color and all that to the frame helps the photo as opposed to kind of hinders it. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, what I'll often do is uh, come down here at the end and play with super contrast. And even though I adjust contrast up here in the light tool in the beginning, I, I tend to do super contrast a little bit later. So I'm gonna plug this in a little bit and just kind of see what happens and then come back around and play with the balance as well. Um, it does pop colors a little bit because contrast will uh, you know accentuate the difference in color. So if I go like this, I kind of like it, um, yeah, I think balance of zero on the highlights is, well, actually maybe a little bit left. That brightens it just a tiny bit. I don't want to go too far and get real bright, but a little bit uh, left is a little bit brighter, you know, which makes sense. I don't want the light to be equal because the source of light, the sunrise, of course, is going to be brighter than the frame, whereas, you know, I'm, in the, I'm on this side of the eye, so by definition, it should be a little bit darker. Um, let me think the midtones here. Yeah, I kind of like that a little bit. Let me check the shadows as well. If I go to the right, it'll really darken that. And if I go to the left, it'll lighten it. So I think I'm going to go slightly left. And let me just check and see. And that's the other thing I do. Uh, I experiment with super contrast, and then I turn it on and off and just decide if I like it. I mean, you kind of do that with any, every filter anyway, but super contrast for me is definitely that because I always look at it before and think, well, do I like it better the old way or the new way? So there it is before, super contrast, and then after. Honestly, it's not a big difference, so I think that's fine. Um, I think it's helped a little bit. I wonder if I should do a little bit more in highlights. 
Let's just see. Yeah, I don't want to get too bright. Um, I kind of like it like that. Let me check the midtones again. Let's see here. It's getting darker that way. I kind of like it going a little bit lighter. And let me check shadows again. If I go to the right, it'll get darker. Okay. I think I kind of like it like that. Let me turn this off one more time. So there it is before the super contrast and after. It's a little bit brighter. I think I like that. I think that looks really good. And I think that's my edit. Uh, you know, honestly, I could sit here and play for a while, but um, I don't want to bore you with a 20 or 30 minute long video where I'm just kind of hacking around. But this is an unscripted edit. I was able to go from that, that's, uh, you know, post crop, of course, to that where it's really vibrant and come to life. And now that I see it like that, I might actually come to color and take the saturation, the vibrance down just a little bit. And I wonder if I should go into the saturation of his red jacket and reduce that a little bit because I don't want to make it over the top, but I might go into luminance of it and lift the luminance a little bit. I kind of like that. It stands out a little bit more, but uh, let me go back. Oops. Uh, let me go back to saturation of that red and pull that down a little bit. I don't want to make it crazy red, but I want it to be brighter, which I think that has helped. So let's look at this before. There it is before, and there it is after. I think I'm going to actually reset the saturation and vibrance to zero and leave them like that. Let me check one more time because I didn't mess this in, so it's affecting more than just his jacket. If you look at the sky, it's impacting the colors there a little bit. So there it is before, and then here it is after. Yeah, I need to mask that in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get a brush. I'm going to get a very small one. And what I want to do is just mask it in to this guy because what I don't want to do is impact the colors in the sky. I had this guy looking very much the way I wanted it to look. So let me do this and then I'll forward the video. Okay, there we go. I finished masking that. So if you want to look at the mask, I'll just hit forward slash and you can just see I just painted that in. Small brush, take your time, get it right on things like that because you know, as I said before, it was impacting the color of that sky and I really like the way that color look. So if I turn this off, there he is before these adjustments and there he is after. I think that helps a little bit, just brightening that up a little bit and taking the saturation down. And that's my edit, my friends. That is a full unscripted walkthrough edit of this photo. And one more time, if you look at the before and after, there it is before and there it is after. Vibrant, colorful, and uh, I don't know, I feel like I really brought it to life. So that's my process. As you can see, I bounce around a little bit. But like I said, these videos are kind of fun because, number one, I don't have to plan. Um, I don't have to script anything out. So it's actually easier for me to make these. But perhaps more importantly, not my benefit, but hopefully the benefit for you is, as you can see, my process is not a linear one where I just say, okay, here's what I'm going to do, and I walk through the steps. And while I do that, because it's good to demo different things that you can do and, and the tools that I use to get to a certain result, it's also, I think, hopefully instructive or useful to you guys to see me kind of wander through you know, not entirely aimlessly, but perhaps a little bit uh, aimlessly in terms of, all right, what do I want to do and how do I get there? So that's how it worked on this one. One more time, before and after, there he is before and there it is after. Much more vibrant, a lot of fun. And um, that's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. You take care of yourselves and adios.